After visiting the pigs at No Name Key, we decided to make our way to the lower part of the Abaco. We would go through Whale Passage with a stop in Baker's Bay. And this is part of the Whale Key Passage. Everybody's having this little lumpy ride through here today, but at least it's still passable. Why it's concerned about fishing. That's all. I like fishing. I've been through this passage about six times now. And we understand from cruising guides and other cruisers that this can be impassable sometimes, but it's never really been an issue each time we've attempted it. Once past Whale Key and on the end of the Great Guana is Baker's Bay. In settled weather, Baker's Bay is a pristine anchorage with lots of starfish and conchs all over the bottom. We also like it for its proximity to a spoil island, which is made of dredging material from the old cruise ship channel. Since we weren't getting much protection in the anchorage from the prevailing wind, we decided to pick up anchor and head towards Treasure Key. So we're sailing into Treasure Key right now, and we've only got a scrap, maybe a little more than a scrap of the jib out. We're trying to get there slowly, I guess, because um, we want enough of the tide to have built up so we can get clear with our draft. So, um, should be there in about half an hour. Hopefully the tide has added a few inches and we can get past their small bar. Treasure Key has one of the most beautiful beaches I've ever been to. Its white sand and turquoise water seem to just go on for miles. We're going to the farmer's market in Treasure Key and Jennifer doesn't remember yesterday anything because she drank a Coca-Cola. These kids are enjoying the resort life. Pizza in the sun. Wait, no. Jenny trying to get conch horns. Uh -oh. We stayed a few days in Treasure Key, getting laundry done, eating pizza, ice cream, and everything else you want to do in a more sizable community. But we had to keep making progress south, so on we went. Well, we got a good sail going from Treasure Key. Um, we're going to Marsh Harbor. We're going to stop first at the Fish Keys and uh, see if we can spear anything off of it or at least get a good snorkel in for the kids. 
that's about it. It's just a beautiful day. I think we're getting about a little under four and a half knots and 11 knots of breeze. So not so bad. Maybe I'm at the fish keys. I'll scrub the bottom a little bit so that uh, maybe I can get a quarter of a knot more out. But it also doesn't help that I'm towing the dinghy back there. Yeah, let's see. I don't know. I think Jenny's doing research on how to make a conch horn because we got two giant conch shells uh, from the conch man. Um, I guess that's it for the update today. And talk to you in a bit. Well, this is Wyatt. He's really cautious and safe in the cockpit. Always wearing that uh, life vest. He's awesome. Tiny does not wear hers. She's not awesome. These are our two wind generators that. Um, they're always in the way because I didn't strap them down out back before we left, so I stuck them in the cockpit. So that's where they are. Usually, when I run them out, if I run the uh, gasoline out of them, I'll go ahead and put them down below. But we're headed over there to the fish keys, and at our slow ass speed of 4.23 knots, we should take, I don't know, the rest of the day. To go snorkel around these islands, and we got our paddle board blown up, so we're excited. fish keys and uh, they're surprisingly devoid of fish. I uh, got a few small ones um, around a rock or two. Limited coral. Looks like um, some rocks are sprouting some coral but it's young, young coral. But it's a it's a nice place to anchor out of the wind, have a little lunch, make some water, run the generators and uh, just all in all you know, hang out for a couple of hours. You working the line? You might get on YouTube. Yeah, but that's okay. If I ever start a channel. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, we are here. Well, we're walking to Maxwell's grocery to load up on stuff. And we hopefully they have some bags because we left the boat without all of our grocery bags that we usually carry our stuff in. And uh, it's gonna be a long back, long walk back, juggling everything. Jennifer's looking good in her dress, and Wyatt's back there doing whatever it is Wyatt does. <laughs> Wyatt is the dink driver. He'll move. I learned that driving to Saratoga. All right, son, if it's going to happen. Mine. We were in Marsh Harbor for a few days, provisioning, taking the dog to the vet, and getting sick with norovirus. Tonight's delicious boat meal is jambalaya, chicken and sausage, andouille sausage and some chicken that we got locally. What is it, Wyatt? What do you think of it? 
gives it a thumbs up. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yep. Pretty tasty. Since our goal was to get south to Eleuthera and beyond, we decided to bypass a lot of the other islands and just jump down south in a couple of hops. Here are the Clemson twins napping in their dual Clemson blankets. Well, here we are. We're at uh, Black Point in, I guess, the southern tip of the Abaco and beautiful sunset. And we just set our water, um, our, our water, we just set in water that is so clear we could see the anchor basically 40 feet in front of our boat buried. So it was pretty, pretty damn awesome. Um, it's good to finally be in some really clear water. And back to the sunset. You really just cannot beat this beautiful sunset tonight. I might be blowing 30 tomorrow, but right now it's just perfect. And there's SV Voyager, our buddy boat, just hanging out. Okay, well we came ashore here. Um, looks like Falcon and Katniss, the buddy boat dogs, have been here running up and down the beach absolutely trashed from the ocean but what, you know, what can people do so much trash gets thrown away in plastic and it just washes up and less people are actively out here just picking it up which well maybe we'll do but it's pretty nasty beautiful spot from afar but when you get close you can see all the little pieces of plastic and have just tearing up the world. Turns out when it's off and super scenic and beautiful, it's covered with bugs. Well, mosquitoes and no seams. The next day we motored down to Linyard Key. This is going to be our final stop before we cross to Eleuthera. We intended Linyard Key to be our last stop before we found the weather window to cross to Eleuthera. Turned out it wasn't, but that's what we intended. It's another good southern stop in the Abacoast if you want clear water in a couple of beaches. On one beach someone had set up a picnic table and a fire pit for cruisers, although most of the island's private and they prefer for you to not go above the high water mark. There's Wyatt showing his dad up on the paddleboard. He can do it. And I'm too fat. Needs more air. Uh, we had to take the dinghy uh, oar off so it works for him. But uh, not so bad. So we're just enjoying the day out here. I think we're going to Luther tomorrow morning. Um, we're on Linyard Key right now. We've been sick with what we think is norovirus for two days that we picked up somewhere in Marsh Harbor. So we have not had a fun two or three days and we're trying to isolate ourselves from other people but still do some things. And uh, paddleboarding is one of them. We're gonna try to snorkel here in a little bit and hopefully uh, wear ourselves out but we just you know we got to do so we got to get off the boat because you get a little you know cabin fever I guess
the several times daily duty of watching the dog do its duty. Although we said we were going to skip it, a passing front forced us to move further north to get protection from the prevailing winds that it would bring. Since we were moving north, we decided that we would try to stop in Elbow Key. We got one day ashore at Hope Town before the weather kicked in and we couldn't get to shore again. Unfortunately, during that time, we didn't shoot much video, although we got a few pictures. If you've never been to Hope Town, it's well worth the trip. With its prominent, hand-cranked, still-operating lighthouse, it is the picturesque behind the village. and cross the Sea of Abaco to the Abaco Beach Club. We arrived just before a passing storm kicked up. Unfortunately, our friends on Voyager weren't so lucky. Finally, I'm going to have all three burners of this thing going. Safely secured to the sea bottom with our mantas, we decided to turn our attention to dinner. Well, we'll find out after. We spent a couple of days at the Abaco Beach Club, and this picture is the highlight of the trip. After our short stay at the Abaco Beach Club, we once again pointed the bow south and headed back to Linyard Key to prep ourselves for crossing to Eleuther. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, consider subscribing to the channel, and tune in next time where we'll actually cross to Eleuther.